I hit it hard, yeah. and I enter, I'm already with the nice yeah. cutting. Boom! When you make a punch, Hi Tribe and welcome to this new video in which of course I will continue to share my knowledge with you and in this particular episode I want to show you a drill that is regarding the trauma medical care and basically it's a self-application of a tourniquet but in another kind of scenario. As you already know, in tactical combat system, I am not teaching only blade combat and fire weapon tactics, but also trauma medicine, because this is a critical element when we talk about being a protector. Even if you can eliminate or incapacitate your aggressor, if until then it was able to injure you or the ones around you and you don't have some basic trauma medical skills, to maintain the victim alive until the professional medical care is arriving, it will not uh, count so much. So very important to implement in your training this type of knowledge. And not all the time it's about combat. The probability, the chances that you need to use your fire weapon skills or your uh, blade combat skills are less than the chances to use a tourniquet to stop a massive bleeding, a car accident, a work accident, you need these saving uh, life skills. And of course that the first thing that you must do is learn how to apply correctly a tourniquet. I have so many videos about it, check it on the YouTube channel uh, in my past videos and see all these important steps so you can learn how to apply this equipment. The tourniquet, the commercial tourniquet, is a special medical device created, designed to stop massive bleeding on the extremities, arms and legs. And now I will make you a normal application, only like an example, and then to pass to the drill that I want to share with you. The first important rule is to understand that you need that tourniquet in the reach of one arm. If you have a professional, let's say, medical trauma bag like this, and it's stored in your car, and you are now in your office at 100, 150 meters far from your car, and something is happening, it will not help you with nothing this professional trauma medical kit. So we must understand how important it is to have that tool in the reach of one arm. So let's say I have the tourniquet in my right pocket because the type of dress code that I have now is permitting me and he has uh, lateral uh, pockets so I can deploy it from there. If not, there are special uh, holsters for the tourniquets or maybe you have a small sling bag that all the time is coming with you so you have it near you. If I need to take it, I am taking it from there. Let's say I have the left arm injured, uh, branchial artery, I am bleeding massively. Again, I have so many videos about this. I only want to show you very fast so you make an understanding with the drill that I will teach you today. So if I'm opening now, if I take my tourniquet and I can use a little bit this hand, of course I will try to get it. But many times it's possible that the nerves are affected or the tendons and you don't have so much control on this hand anymore. So you can use, for example, your mouth. Yeah. A very important thing I was teaching you in the past also many times, there are some uh, tips. For example, the tourniquet when it's coming from the fabric, uh, take the time strap that is uh, blocking the windlass, put it aside because this, when you are under the effect of adrenaline, fine motor skills will not operate at the same level and this movement, it will, even if now it's easy to make, 
it will represent an obstacle. The same I have at the end of the tourniquet. Uh, this type of tourniquet, this is coming until the end of the tip with Velcro. So this movement, to make this, it will be very hard. So what I'm making is the last part of it. I am bending it in interior. So if I need to have a much better grip, I can catch it better. Or if I need to operate only with one hand, I can catch it with my uh, teeth. So I'm taking it outside. I'm coming, I have, let's say a scenario, um, uh, massive bleeding, branchial uh, artery lacerated. I'm coming with a term tourniquet respecting the rule high and tight. In the civilian medical care uh, procedures, they tell you two, three inches above the wound, but because you can be also in a tactical environment, in a danger zone, you don't have the time to expose the wound and to really to put a two, three inches above it, then you go respecting the rule high and tight. So I'm going as much as I can up. I'm catching because I already have this very good here made and I am controlling, tying as much as I can, coming back around with the strap. Then I begin to twist the windlass, twist it, twist it, until the blood, the bleeding will be controlled. And then I'm securing it in the C clamp. I'm taking the other part of the strap, coming around, and then I'm putting the tie strap. So this is an application of a tourniquet. Please all the time don't forget about this part. Put it around, come around with it. This is coming from a real experience that I was having uh, when we apply a tourniquet and we must, we didn't tie this very good. It was immediately, it was hanging and we must drag this guy down and there were different kind of vegetation around and he was catching with this the vegetation and the tourniquet will get loose. So very important to respect all these uh, tips so you have a good application and you can control that bleeding. The same you can make also with the other hand or with the legs, with the extremities coming high and tight. And I have students that they are practicing, they are good now in applying the tourniquet, not only under one minute, but also under 40 seconds, 30 seconds. So they are able very fast to apply a tourniquet. Now the problem is beginning to start when people are liking to be in the comfort zone. When you are remaining in that comfort zone, because you don't want to push yourself more, you will have the idea that you are good and you master some skills, but that is only the first step. So if you are able to put that tourniquet fast under one minute, under 40 seconds, 30 seconds, applying it under, I don't know what kind of circumstances, it's very good. But if you don't push yourself and begin to think at scenarios that can be more complicated that, than only uh, putting you to apply it, to make a self-application of the tourniquet with one hand on an arm or with two hands on the uh, leg, then you will remain at the level that only you will think that you are uh, good in applying a tourniquet. So all the time we must push each other much and think what other kind of situation can happen. And now all the time I'm telling to my students, of course, you are mastering now the application of a tourniquet with one hand on the other hand or with two hands on the leg. But what is happening now if I tell you that you are in a car driving near you have your wife or I don't know, family members, suddenly you have an accident, your wife is unconscious, you are hitting a big uh, obstacle, and suddenly after a few seconds from the knockout, you are waking up 
two, three seconds, five seconds, already time is passing and you see yourself that you have the hand blocked between the, uh, the car that was crashed and maybe you have the femoral artery from the leg lacerate. You have the tourniquet at you as always, but you didn't train never to apply that tourniquet to a leg with one hand. Or what if I am telling you that suddenly you find yourself in a type of scenario, not combat, not it can be an accident, it can be, I don't know, a kind of explosion, something else, work accident, and you find yourself all the hand it's blown, you don't have any more fingers or it's uh, severed all the hand and from this hand also you don't have three more fingers. You are shaking, you don't have so good control anymore, you are under that uh, effect of the shock and you must apply this tourniquet in that particular condition. So by understanding that creating scenarios, we can find different kind of situations that it will, will be, all these situations will, will be more harder than what we were thinking that it's an application of a tourniquet. This we, uh, it will help us only become better and prepare for different kind of scenarios. And now I will show you a drill that you can implement in your training and it will push you a little bit more so what you need is a training tourniquet. Uh, this, for example, it's a normal uh, tourniquet. It's not a training one, but I am keeping it only for the training. And I recommend also to you, I was um, signed with training, writing on it. So I use it only for training. I don't put this in my, uh, I don't know, daily carry uh, medical trauma bag, because if I need it and this it will lose his characteristics, I will have a problem. So a tourniquet and some duct tape. Okay guys, so what I was doing and what you can do, if you cannot alone ask somebody, it's not so complicated, basically this hand, one of the hand, put it with duct tape so you cannot have any more uh, the fingers, to use the fingers. You can think that the fingers are blown or maybe not only blown, but maybe you uh, still have uh, intact hand, but you cannot use any more that fingers because a nerve or something is affected. At the other, I let only two fingers and the others are with duct tape uh, tied. So this is a particular scenario in which I am thinking that I can be in a car accident or I can be in a work accident, something is happening and now it's the only way in which I can perform uh, this. And again, this still is not so hard to do, but it's the next step. Because after you can pass, for example, to put this hand in a uh, uh, ice with wa ice water bucket, put the hand there, let it few minutes until you don't feel these fingers very good, until you cannot move it very good. Because that it will happen in a real situation, your fine motor skills will not operate at the same level. And maybe if you lose these fingers, not maybe, but for sure the others, the control of the hand and how you are feeling uh, with that, uh, or the ability of grabbing and making some uh, activities with these uh, fingers, again, they will not be at the same uh, level. So in this situation, you can begin to train the next uh, step. So I'm making the same thing using only the fingers that I can, taking my tourniquet from my pocket, bringing it near me, open the tourniquet, coming with the tourniquet around, but using only these fingers, not more, and try to apply the tourniquet exactly how I was doing earlier. If you don't have the possibility, if you cannot move very good, you can use the ground, you can use the wall pushing with your uh, shoulder in such a way that you create the pressure to close this tourniquet, to tie it good. I'm coming around and then using only three fingers, 
I am beginning to learn and to see how difficult is or that is more difficult than when I was doing before in a normal condition. Stop the bleeding, putting the windlass in the C-clamp, coming with the other part, closing it. You can find different kinds of scenarios working with a partner, make it more realistic in such a way you can put the light down, you can be on darkness, you can be in low visibility environment. It's something else, everything it will change. So every time push yourself in such a way that you understand that it will exist every time a more better bad uh, situation than in uh, which you were training before. So this is our goal, to push ourselves to find different kinds of situations in which we can try to become better, to master the skills of applying and control, apply a tunicate and control a massive bleeding. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you understand the message. Every time push yourself in such a way that you exit from the comfort zone and you think of a new scenario that will make you uh, train and prepare better for that particular situation. Thank you very much, train hard, and of course, stay safe until next time.